Hello, this is Dr. Amin Monashi, retina specialist in Monashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed pathological myopia. In this presentation, I will discuss OCT's clinical applications in hereditary diseases, including retinitis pigmentosa, conroid dystrophy, best vitally form macular dystrophy, central areolar choroidal dystrophy, and X-linked juvenile retinoschisis. Retinitis pigmentosa usually features partial or total loss of outer retinal tissues, including the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane. Those may indicate bad visual prognosis, where in severe cases there would be intraretinal pigmentation that may cast a shadow artifact, RPA atrophy which may show increased choroidal reflectivity, or add subretinal scarring. OCT is important to diagnose cystic macular edema in patients with retinitis pigmentosa, which may feature increased macular thickness with hyporeflective cystic changes with or without subretinal fluids. Please note, in this case, the residual integrity of central external limiting membrane and the ellipsoid zone, which indicates favorable visual prognosis post-treatment. Some patients of retinitis pigmentosa can be presented with vitromacular abnormalities. This case shows toad vitreous causing vitromacular traction and epiretinal membrane, causing intraretinal cystic changes with increased retinal thickness. Please note the absence of the an ellipsoid zone and the external limiting membrane at the center. OCT is very useful to monitor cystic macular edema progression, as in this case, cysts ruptured the inner uh, retinal walls causing glamular hole due to loss of molar cells support. On the other hand, OCT can reveal post-treatment efficacy. This example shows an OCT cross-section of a patient with retinitis pigmentosa with central macular thickness with intraretinal cystic changes. Other cross-sections show the resolution of the edema after treatment with oral acetazolamide. In Conroid dystrophy, it may feature cystic macular edema with loss of both ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane similar to retinitis pigmentosa. In this case, showing hyperreflective interretinal cystic changes with increased retinal thickness and loss of ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane. And the other cross section shows resolved edema after oral treatment with acetazolamide. Sometimes, when star guard disease complicated with conroid dystrophy in advanced stages, it may feature a subretinal hyperreflective gap in the outer retinal tissues with some residual granular deposits due to loss of ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane, forming a hyperreflective space. In advanced stages, it can be presented with outer retinal and RPE atrophy. In best disease, OCT shows an accumulation of subretinal hyperreflective material with increased thickness of the ellipsoid zone. Similar findings can be found in adult onset foveomacular vitreiform dystrophy, where subretinal hyperreflective material accumulate between the RPE and intact ellipsoid zone. In the pseudohypopian stage, there would be a subretinal hyperreflective pocket which contains subretinal fluids with increased thickness of photoreceptor layer. And it can sometimes confuse it with central serous chorioretinopathy. As careful inspection of vitally formed lesions which appear as a hyperreflective uh, material uh, located subretinally. And detailed inspection of emphasis OCT which shows increased reflectivity of the vitally formation adjacent to decreased reflectivity of hyperreflective subretinal fluids may aid to confirm the diagnosis along with the traces of subretinal orange material deposits on fundus image. Fundus autofluorescence and EOG can confirm the diagnosis as well. In Vitally eruptive stage, there would be a mix of hypo and hyperreflective subretinal materials with alternation of RPE and disorganization of ellipsoid zone. 
In advanced atrophic stage, there would be RPA atrophy with disruption of the ellipsoid zone and external limbic membrane with synth retina with subretinal scar formation. Sometimes, some small cystic changes may be due to impairment of RPE function to maintain a dry retina. Sometimes, this disease can feature fibrotic pillar, which projects from RPE towards the subretinal space in the form of hyperreflective mass that may cast shadow artifact, and usually surrounded with subretinal fluids, which may indicate an active choroidal neovascular membrane. This is a case of base disease shows fibrotic pillar with subretinal fluids. The next cross section shows resolved subretinal fluid post treatment with vitreous blockade agent with a decrease in fibrotic pillar. However, treatment with intravitreal injections is not always successful in resolving the subretinal fluids, and the presence of neovascularization should be confirmed with OCT angiography or fluorescein angiography. Some best cases may get complicated with choroidal neovascularization, as in this case it shows an accumulation of subretinal fitly formed lesions. However, adjacent to it there is a fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment. Still in other cross sections for the same patient there is a pigment epithelial detachment showing increased reflectivity of Brooks membrane forming double layer sign adjacent to subretinal fluids that indicate an active occult choroidal neovascular membrane. Please note that choroid is thick with dilated halors in both cross sections indicating the presence of pachychoroid. Central areolar choroidal dystrophy OCT cross-sections shows atrophic changes of RPE and loss of ellipsoid zone and thinning of outer retinal layers which are located adjacent to a preserved retinal area of RPE and outer retinal tissue. X-linked retinoschisis shows tubular cystic formation and increase of retinal thickening. However, as the disease progresses, the cystic spaces may collapse. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned to the next presentation where I will talk about OCT's clinical applications in miscellaneous macular pathologies as the final presentation.